welcome to the all-you-can-eat mega buffet. One of Europe's biggest restaurants. Probably got about 200 people waiting in the walk-in queue. Covering 27,000 square feet and serving up to 300 dishes from all over the world. The JRC Global Buffet in Watford can feed as many as 3,000 people every day. This is for sweet and sour chicken. So how do you feed us as much as we want for a set price and keep your business afloat? With exclusive access, we go behind the scenes of this booming phenomenon. I'm going to do the table of 27 in section B. I'm going to do the table of 20 in section B, yeah? Meet the mega fans who know just how to beat the buffet. Uh, definitely come here with the strategy. And the army of people who try their hardest to keep the meal machine running smoothly. This is like organising chaos. Hey, let's go. <laughs> this is Secrets of the World's Mega Buffet. Behind an unassuming door on Watford's High Street, it's the quiet before the storm at one of Europe's biggest restaurants. Or is it? Uh, Angelo, do you copy? Manager Evan is overseeing front of house before they open for one of the busiest days of the year, Father's Day. Can you be in the section A, please? And for the first time ever, we've been given access to see what makes them tick. At this food mecca, customers can eat all they can handle for one price, including all the soft drinks they can guzzle. The salad bar is over there. We have a Spanish, Italian, Brazilian, American, Indian section. Here we have a Chinese dim sum, Thai section, and the Singapore dish, Malaysia dish, and the Chinese mink is just over there. And right here, then we have all the starters, desserts. Down this side, we have a tampiyaki over there, Japanese section. The restaurant covers 27,000 square feet. Ten times the size of your average high street eatery. It's split into eight distinct areas, each serving different cuisines from around the world, including cooking stations for up to 20 chefs. And an army of 85 staff made up of 20 nationalities will be taking on the mission to feed the masses over an 11 hour shift. Angelo, can you check your floor? See all the knife and fork and put it in the wrong place? Yeah. Glasses. The chefs only have one hour from arriving to get everything on show. We want the dish to be displayed in the buffet as minimum uh, time as possible to keep it fresh. Our company goal is cook fresh and eat fresh. The all-you-can-eat buffet is a restaurant trend that was born of the city that invented excess, Las Vegas. The Midnight Buffet, a tempting display of delicious food prepared by chefs to please the most exacting gourmet. The craze has now swept across the UK, with hundreds of thousands of us visiting this kind of restaurant every year. As well as 300 dishes needing to be prepared before the doors open, it's also delivery time. Hello, my friend, are you all right? Have you got the uh, popcorn? Yeah, 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 yeah. Juggling this mammoth task is Jason, the kitchen manager. <laughs> All the food for Father's Day must be hauled up three floors to the prep kitchen backstage. 
and to serve mountains of fresh food on a daily basis means truckloads of deliveries. Here, that's up to 18 a week, including a quarter of a tonne of rice, more than 1,500 litres of soft drinks and a thousand onions. Oh, have they delivered you long? Yeah, yeah, this is no good. Let her return, yeah? Return it. Thank you, thank you, yeah. Unpacking it means all hands on deck. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Three, three, six, nine, eleven. <laughs> there are too many, you see. This is just one company. While Jason and the kitchen staff continue to unload behind the scenes, one of the most important jobs in this mega-sized restaurant can be found the furthest away from any food, front of house. I only have 6.30 or 8.30 left. Reception manager Hannah will be on the front line between as many as 3,000 hungry punters and the buffet with the face of the restaurant, so we're having to explain the processes and procedures before anyone actually enters the restaurant. And a key part of that is how much they'll pay. On Father's Day, adults will pay £20.99. But for children, it's a bit more complicated. If they're under 90 centimetres, they're free. And if they're under the top 150 centimetre mark, then they're half price. We found that not a lot of children or parents carried ID for the children. This is probably one of the most challenging parts about working on the reception. Sometimes people have children that are quite tall uh, for their age, and sometimes, you know, people insist that the children are under this market. And it's looking like it's going to be a hectic shift. Today I'm one down, which makes my job a little bit harder. We'll wait and see. We'll see what happens. Back on the buffet, the chefs are in a race against the clock. One hour preparation, everything for buffet American, Brazilian, Spanish, Italian, salad bar. In one hour preparation, everything. Alina has to get ready most of her 30 dishes from scratch before the first customer walks in through the door. Chicken wings. Uh, ribs, chili. Three years here in England, uh, before 20 years in Italy kitchen. No, not tired. Very easy for me. Twelve o'clock, and it's showtime. Very, very easy. As a nation, half of us eat out every week. And when it comes to Father's Day, it's big business for restaurants. In 2019, it's estimated we spent more than half a billion pounds on the special men in our lives. At JRC Global Buffet Watford, it's one of the busiest days in their calendar. Jesse Global, how can I help? Well, I'll have my colleague will meet you on the top. So, welcome through. Hand that to my colleague as you go through. Someone will take you through to your table, OK? Thank Enjoy you. your meal, guys. Hiya, who's next? As soon as the customer has handed over their cash and been shown to their table, the buffet is all theirs. But on the weekend, they're on the clock. It's 1 hour 45 if they've booked and 15 minutes less if they haven't. All to keep the tables turning. So how do you feed thousands of people in just one day? First of all, you need an eye-watering amount of food. Lamb leg. This is the marination for tomorrow cooking. This is a muscle, which is good, very big. This is a mushroom. This is for 
sweet and sour chicken. Uh, today we are cutting 12 box. It's one box is 10 kilo. 20 hobs and ovens right across the restaurant will be running non-stop for 10 hours to keep up with the customer's insatiable appetites. And that's not all. Food still needs getting ready for the next day. Every day, same job, just to prepare cooking, prepare cooking. Always like this. Same like a machine. <laughs> In the prep kitchen, they cook everything from eye-boggling amounts of noodles to Jason's pride and joy. Oh, that is ready. Jason is one of the oldest staff. He's always spent his free time to create new dishes. I think he's one of the best chefs in our group. I'm very proud of him. Ah, oh, this color. This bigger oven, cooking nine. One time, nearly 100 duck, one week. Uh, Father's Day, Mother's Day, oh, this is special. Must have made a, a lot of for the customer. Some people say, oh, I love this duck. If you like this, I'm happy. Customers steam through huge amounts of everything else too. In just one week, they can demolish two and a half thousand spring rolls. More than half a ton of chicken. And not forgetting a pud to finish things off. Diners here can wolf down more than 1,000 tubs of ice cream and 2,000 mini cheesecakes in just seven days. The teppanyaki is fantastic. So you can get like fresh steaks and everything. How often you come here? <laughs> At least four times a week, sometimes. We drive quite a long, a long way to come for this to this place. Uh, all the way from Northampton, an hour, fifteen minutes drive. If they closed, oh my God, <laughs> what would we do? It does amaze me how far people will travel um, to come to the restaurant. I mean, we've had people come down from Manchester, for example. Uh, in like groups of 60 and another thing as well is uh, regular customers so we may see the same customer three or four times on a weekly basis as well as mega fans key to a successful mega buffet is managing the flow of the thousands of people who can visit in just one day so it started it's the job of reception manager Hannah, and she's already got her hands full. Literally from the moment we opened the door, the queue started. If you want to take a seat, it's just going to be a couple more minutes for the table, OK? Sorry, sweetheart. Thank you. The biggest group I've seen was just over 300 people. It was a regular church group that come in, but the whole congregation came. 40 of you is yes. the large VIP room. You're the first here, just to let you know. And a special occasion like Father's Day brings with it big families wanting to celebrate. When you have so many people in one space, um, you have to be very smart about the way that you organise things. Give me one moment, I'm just going to make sure your table's ready, OK? So it's 11 of you still, yeah? There's a quote, failing to plan is planning to fail. Is that it? Reception is also filling up with diners waiting in hope of a free table. Guys, uh, do we have any tables for walk-in customers at all? Known as walk-ins, there can be more than a thousand on a busy day. Walk-ins fit in when uh, somebody's late and their table's cancelled. We'll then divide the table and give that away to walk-in customers. Due to their huge number, there's a strict queuing system. One for bookings and one for walk-ins. I've had to start dividing the queue, so I have a walk-in queue now. This is like organising chaos. Mother's Day last year, 
It was so busy that we actually had to take the barriers from the reception upstairs and put them onto the high street and start to divide the queue outside of the restaurant. People were walking past and coming up to us and saying, is this a nightclub? What is it? There was a day on uh, Saturday, we had a walk-in for 40 people. It was exactly 41. To be honest with you, I can't imagine 41 people walking around the high street looking for a restaurant to eat. And if they do need any help outside, then this restaurant has three security guards on call, including Mo. From the outside, it looks very small, and inside, it's actually lovely, wicked. Sunday is a family day. We've got a lot of people coming in, having a nice little time inside. Get presidential customer service from the security guard. Hiya, how many of you are there? Four. Four, okay. So you'll be surprised how long people are willing to wait and the patience that people have to be seated, especially when you're hungry. You just want to sit down and eat. Just two hours after opening, and 600 customers have already been checked in. This is nothing yet. It's going to get a lot busier. And with the front desk 350 feet away from the furthest part of the restaurant, their walkie-talkies are already proving vital. Can I have a table for four, please? Table for four. Especially when it comes to getting the waiting customers to one of the 250 tables. Seven, five, four, seven and three. Can I let them in? Yes, yes, let them in, let them in. It's in floor manager Angelo's hands to ensure everything on the floor runs smoothly. Uh, Byram, Byram, let me know how many tables you got left in section A. Let me know how many tables you got left in section A. Hundreds of customers are moving around and eating at once. Having this restaurant that big is like managing four restaurants at the same time. You've got four sections, so you have to fill up four restaurants. To manage a floor this big, the seating area is divided into four zones. A, B, C and D. Every half an hour, a section is closed and a new one is opened, meaning Angelo can clearly keep track of who is where. You have to remember how many seats each section has. You have to remember how many bookings are coming in in the section, how many walkings are waiting outside. You need to have plan A, plan B and plan C, at least. Or otherwise, you're going to get stuck somewhere. It being one of the busiest days of the year means Angelo may need a full alphabet of backup plans. We're going to have loads of walk-ins that we're unable to book, and we have to split them within the time that we're not fully booked. That's going to be the biggest challenge today. Three hours in, and the walk-ins are heading out of reception. OK, Angelo, are you ready for the new walk-in list? So I need a table for three, three, seven, four. It's a bit like uh, reading off, like, lucky numbers or lottery numbers, as the list can go on and on and on. Four, nine, four, twelve, five, six, five and five. Do you copy? As many walk-ins as possible. That's really important for the business. If we use each section uh, at least four times, the count says, 2,000 to 2,500 customers. I would say there are between 80 to 100 customers waiting for the table. So it's going to be a bit of a mission to put them all in. The more customers that are piling in, the more plates are in action. Probably a lot of trips to the buffet. I don't know how many, there'll be quite a few though. <laughs> Four Yeah. What food are you going to get? I'm going to get the spicy stuff. That's my favourite. Look how nice this is. I've seen the children do eight trips to the buffet in the past. Um, so I think they may be underestimating slightly when they say they've done four or five trips to the buffet. Um, I'm usually about two. Yeah. If I know I'm going to have dessert, it will be two. I go for about <laughs> three to four. Of course, yeah. And then dessert. <laughs> it's the job of executive chef Ken 
to help keep the customers' taste buds tingling. And normally, one dish you're cooking about one minute. Beef in black and sauce dish. So I will check the quality today, so make sure everything is cooking correct. Ken is a gourmet chef with more than 20 years in the business. We need to train all of the chefs who can cook the huge amount of the food every day. So this is not easy, like for a la carte restaurant, we're just cooking one food for one plate, for one bit, for one person. To help the chefs cook at speed but keep the quality high, Ken has a very precise instruction bible for them to follow. The dish come out, it should be look like that. And all of the ingredients what we need, so we will put a little messy here. White onion, carrot. With cooking so close to the customers, they can keep an eye on what people like. All of our chefs working here, they on the counter, they have the recording of how many portions they're selling. So we will see the one week, for example, the beef in black and sauce dish. Every day we send more than 10 portions. If people like, the customer will give you the feedback immediately. Then we will go to the message and we will know how we can do this better. And being right by the buffet means every chef can importantly keep an eye on what is running low. Wow. Huh. So they can keep making more. Back on the floor, Angelo's platoon of 18 staff are hard at work. Broken down into squads, they're deployed to different sections, each crew member covering as much as five miles in a shift. Brittany is on the Section D crew, and all 93 tables need turning before the customers are let in, including Angelo's waiting walk-ins. You know, I can be told, oh, um, you know, go around the corridors with the brush, yeah, on it. Could you go and clean so-and-so's plates off the table, yeah, on it, you know. <laughs> it's all about identifying the risks and hazards as well. Don't want anyone breaking a leg. OK, let's go. <laughs> we'll all have assigned things to do, so... One, for example, be in charge of putting the cutlery on. We've got people that can carry glasses like that, all in stacks. I can take a fair chunk of plates in my hand, but I've learned that from over time. We'll have another cleaning the tables. Then to the end, we'll have someone brushing under the table, just making sure that everything is just spick and span again for our new customers. <laughs> 186 customers seated, and tucking in in just 15 minutes. The section there is all full now. It took us 15 minutes to fill it up. That's a lot of customers, considering the restaurant they're doing one day. On to the next battle of the buffet. Uh, Byram, Byram, I'm going to do the table of 27 in section B. I'm going to do the table of 20 in section B, yeah? JRC Global Buffet in Watford is one of the biggest restaurants in Europe, serving enough customers a year to fill Wembley Stadium twice over. OK, so I need a table for 12, 3, 2, 2, 2, 2 and 2. Do you copy? Let me know who I can let in. And on Father's Day, it's 85 staff are now halfway through their shift. As well as volume, this place is all about speed. Andy on the Teppanyaki station can grill a thousand portions of meat and fish in just one shift. This is talon steak, this is lamb chop, and here we have. Uh king prongs, and uh, this is squid, it's baby octopus, and this is butter scallop, and uh, this is fish. It's two items per customer. It's the it's only station with a limit, and that's to keep the queue on the move. My section here to the desert section, that's the queue of people. Yeah, from here to the desert section of there. 
and there's a long queue of people who are waiting to enjoy this food. This section is the most busy place in the buffet because uh, people lack fresh food. Some customers just stand beyond there just to watch me. Just the way I'm cooking, you know, they enjoy to watch it, you know. Thank you very much, Andrew. I'm most popular here because just when the end does, hey, hello, Andy. I like to cook, I like to, you know, I like it's like a boxing, you know, chop, chop, and then. <laughs> I love it. So, with such sizzling specialities on offer and the option to eat almost as much as you want, how do you balance the books? For the profit, lots of competition or other restaurants think I won't make any profit because we provide a huge variety of foods. We have a large buying power, so we can get the goods in cheap price compared to other restaurants. And also with different seasons, we order different foods. When the food is in season, it's cheaper. As well as negotiating over noodles, to turn a profit, you need as many bums on seats as possible. And that means strict timekeeping, especially on one of the busiest days of the year. Just to let you know, we hold the table for 15 minutes, so just try and get here for 8 o'clock if you can, OK? And woe betide anyone who's late for their date with the buffet. We need at least 80 to 90% of the table to be here in order to get them through, because all the table will have the same time limit. So if only five of them turn up, it's a table of 40, we won't let them in. That's the policy. They have to wait for the rest. So you just need to wait for a majority to be here before we can see you. And if they're more than 15 minutes late, it's game over. They'll have to join the back of the walk-in queue. On occasions, we will have to tell 40, 50 people to join the back of a queue. I don't like to tell people their tables are cancelled. And the longer the walking queue, the more pressure on Angelo. Uh, Bobo, Bobo, can you come in section uh, B, Bravo, please? Can you come in section B? 70% of customers stay until their time limit is up. But one family are having too much fun to leave. So they've been here for longer than an hour, 45 minutes already. They've been here roughly one hour. 50 minutes, so now our challenge is to get them out. With four years managing the floor, Angelo is an expert on how long every customer has been in the restaurant. The first step is to send the supervisor over and inform them the time limit is up, and I give them three minutes to get ready, finish the desserts, and leave the restaurant. After that, I go myself, let them know the time limit is up, we need the tables back. If that doesn't work, we send four or five staff to collect everything from the table. Bobo, please inform the table there, 15 minutes left. The table there, the time is up. One more table reclaimed. Lumi, collect all the plates from this table, everything. So. One less family in the walking queue. Five, yeah, it's ready for you. My colleague will serve you. When it comes to guests not wanting to leave, Angelo has heard and seen it all. We haven't been informed about the time limit. Having children, I have to walk around with them. That slows me down. Some customers, they know exactly which section we use next. And they try to see if they have another table in the following section. And customers better watch out for Angelo's sixth sense. As I have a photographic memory, I can remember them. So I'm like, you were here two months ago. I'm, we were talking about the same thing we're talking now. So I'm pretty sure you knew about it. It seems it's not the only strategy to beat the buffet and get the most bang for your book. From heading straight for the fancy foods, I uh, definitely come here with the strategy. Uh, I tend to avoid the starters. Generally, I tend to hang around the Japanese section quite a bit. 
playing the long game. My strategy is usually just middle and often, leave a little bit of a space between them because otherwise I get really full really quickly. Beating the competition. I'm very partial to the salad bar and it's always key to get in there first. Or just using a bit of initiative. We have a master plan for desserts now. So we don't go to the chocolate fountain anymore. We bring the chocolate fountain to us. <laughs> uh, so we pour chocolate into a glass and we bring it back to the table. Nice. <laughs> oh, stick it in. 6 p.m. The floor team have now been in action for six hours. It's the busiest time of the day, but there's no chance of slowing down. In each section, in just 15 minutes, the team need to reset as many as 240 glasses, placemats, knives and forks. And the faster they are, the better it is for business. When it's like this, we have to be very, very fast. Sometimes I carry about 200, 300 plates per hour. Depends how busy it is. I can do 600. 18-year-old Rehan is also on shift, which is a good job. He's the fastest on the team with a record of 15 tables per minute. Plus, young kids, yeah, we can be fast. I started here age 17, but now I'm 18 now. I was a rookie back then. I progressed, you know, became fast on the floor. And my supervisor started calling me Speedy Gonzalez. He runs, he puts everything in his work. He can be really, really fast. When you're fast, you got to make sure that everything is precise. You've got to be aware of everywhere. Don't bump into anyone. You've got to make sure you're in control, you know? You know, when everyone goes, you're speedy, you got, you got this, you're the best man. It's just like everyone around me gives me more energy to go even more faster. That's what I love life. Give me like that sense of thrill. Another section ready for punters. Rehan and the floor team aren't just clearing tables. The 15 trolleys they whiz around the floor collect as much as 65 tonnes of leftovers a year. So how does the restaurant fight food waste and stop expensive stock ending up in the bin? We have a very good uh, management system to minimise the waste. Kitchen staff need to have a checking system to see how much food you need to add in and when is the time to stop cooking. So we cook in small portion, uh, especially end of the service time. That's why we don't have a lot of waste after we finish. Today, Adriana is their secret weapon in managing sushi levels. This is Japanese section where we prepare the sushi, the rice, the ingredient, the salmon. Everybody loves salmon. You can put one plate of sushi in front, you turn, and when you go back, it's empty <laughs> in one minute. You can hear the children saying, oh, sushi, I love the sushi. <laughs> it's so nice when you hear them. You have to think because uh, it's a buffet, it's a very big buffet. Depends on how many clients you have. You can cook too much if you have less clients. It's very busy, you have to cook more. You can manage the situation. But once a customer starts to tuck in, it's much tougher to manage. On a busy day, full-up diners can still leave enough food to feed another 6,500 people. Can you finish with this one as well? Yeah. Yeah, thank you. There can be quite a lot. Customers use the whole all-you-can-eat buffet thing to their advantage. But if this is your first time coming to a restaurant like this where there is just food everywhere, you know, People's eyes become bigger than their stomachs, you know. These unloved leftovers will join the roughly three tonnes of waste that's collected every week. Either to be recycled or converted to energy and ploughed back into the national grid. Supplying enough to power two dozen homes for a year. 
cycle goes on. With now more than one and a half thousand pull-up diners, each chef is tearing through their supplies. Hello. How are you doing? Today I make more than 100 pizza. But will they have enough goods to go the distance? Back on reception, the wait at the back of the walking queue is nearly two hours. Hello, how are you? I recognise you. <laughs> how are you? Ha happy Father's Day. <laughs> We've probably got about maybe about 200 people waiting in the walking queue. Where's a diversion when you need one? Do you want to keep the um, walk-ins entertained for a bit? Yeah, thank you. It's great having uh, a magician here, especially during the really busy times, uh, to keep customers entertained. It keeps a bit of the weight off my shoulder as well. So there's only one card in the whole pack of your name on it? Yeah. Yes? The team are managing the constant tide of people, but the size of the restaurant is testing their key piece of kit. OK, uh, guys, are you ready for a new walk-in list? Do you copy? Repeat that again. I'm just going to get a radio that actually works. I'm going to steal my boss's radio. Tell me about the walkie-talkies. Oh. Angelo, come to reception, please. Come to reception. Oh. Sometimes on a busy day, we cannot hear each other. Yeah, I can hear you now. Oh, I can hear you too. I bet you he's standing there. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that because you're nearly on reception? I keep having the idea to run a little cable, a cup to me, a cup to Hannah. Broken walkie-talkies or not, the walk-ins must be fitted in. Can I send in some walk-ins, please? The queue's going out the door. Any? Diana, I'm going to start letting in walk-ins, yeah? Hi, guys. Thank you so much for waiting. Start at 11, still have no breaks. Hopefully they're going to have one around 8, 8.30, as soon as everything comes down. But I had no chance to take a break. But Brittany has bad news for Angelo. We're going to have a lot more customers coming later, which means our chances of having a break are going to be not as easy. Evening, sir. Yeah, welcome through. One of Europe's biggest restaurants, JRC Global Buffet in Watford, has been piling in the punters for Father's Day for more than seven hours. So it's uh, three adults, and with the children we go behind, um, I don't want to overcharge you. Okay. So if you just want to double check, um, just on the wall over here. Who's under that one? Lexi, where do you come? Yeah. And Emily. Evening, sir. Sometimes the customers be full up when they come outside sleeping. Yeah, come through, sir. Come through. Straight upstairs to reception. One place that never gets a snooze is where the hardest work in the whole restaurant happens. And they've been full steam ahead all day. With 20 plates being used by customers every minute, in the washroom, they've been cleaning 1,200 an hour to keep up. Washing, difficult. This job is hard, really. This guy, you see, put the plates very quick. So working hard, I like this guy. Yeah. After a quick rinse, it's time for some heavyweight help. Four machines can get through 80 plates every 90 seconds. Normally, one restaurant, we just have one, one machine, but we have four machines. while 180 pieces of cutlery are air-dried every minute. This one trolley, about 700 plates, 14, 15 trolley. Very busy, come in, go out, come in, go out. I can't believe it. Been really busy today. Today has been a really hard job. 
I think we've done at least a thousand customers more than a normal Sunday. And we weren't expecting to be this busy, but we're going to get the end of the shift, hopefully. Key to running a successful mega buffet isn't all about the food. In fact, some loyal customers come for completely different reasons. Some customers that just love the whole dining experience, but then we also have customers that come in as regular customers, as they know us as staff. Hello. Very well, thank you. And you? <laughs> oh, I'm home. I'm home. <laughs> Absolutely love it here. Can never wait to get here. You can just get up. You talk to people along there, and when you get new food. There's nobody here to talk to right this minute. They must be busy. It is big, but the bigger the better. And the more people watching we can do. From people watching to the more unexpected experience. My daughter was severely, you know, disabled. We went to other restaurants and she made a lot of noises. Wasn't welcome. We were told to leave because of her disability. When she comes here, they all make her like a, feel like a family and, uh, you, you know, don't mind her making noises. She can say it and, you know, be free to do what she wants. And, um, she's quite happy, you know. If I take number one, place into this hand, number two into this hand, I go one, two, three, pick a hand for me. This one, no, watch, look, this one disappears and it jumps over to this hand over here. <laughs> Is that cool? Give me a high five. No more customers, please. No more customers. Yep, copy that, all received. Have a good night, sir. See you again. The third busiest day ever in the restaurant is over. It's finally gone a bit quieter. We can actually breathe. <laughs> it was busier than what we expected. It definitely. was, yeah. Team today worked really well. Everyone, reception, floor, cleaners, everyone done the job perfectly. We had to do long shifts, all of us, but we managed good from the beginning to the end. So. Are you doing your Fitbit? Yeah, my Fitbit is over 12,000. A few steps today. Quite a few. A pretty empty fridge, but a full house of customers. We opened five years now. We never fallen behind. Never happened once. The staff is the backbone of the business. It's like a huge puzzle and each of the staff members are a small part of that puzzle. When you manage to make happy 2,000, 2,500 customers in one day, it's a big accomplishment. Just rewarding managing to put all these customers in and make them happy. The thought of working in a, a small restaurant um, doesn't, doesn't seem like it's for me. In total, nearly two and a half thousand people were fed and watered. Chickpeas. In one day, spending almost £40,000 gorging on everything from naan breads to nuggets. Jonat Stowe went the distance and he smashed his pizza PB. Today I have made 300 pizza. I feel good. Not tired, little, just little tired. No problem. Janot is a brother. Same family here. Popular guy Andy cooked up nearly 4,000 teppanyaki treats. And the floor team covered 120 miles around the restaurant. Have a good night. Just about time to do it all again tomorrow.